Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. Before we dive in, let me make a quick apology. CD Projekt Red wouldn't allow us to use our own recorded gameplay for this review. So unlike a typical IGN review, what you're going to see while I talk about Cyberpunk 2077 isn't entirely representative of what I experienced when I played. But that restriction is only temporary, so when it comes out, we'll publish a new version of this review with our own footage to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Also, keep in mind that we haven't gotten to touch the PlayStation or Xbox versions yet, so what I'm talking about here is specifically the PC version of Cyberpunk 2077, which I played on a GeForce RTX 3080 GPU. And now, on to the review. The quality of an open-world RPG often isn't defined by the strength of its main story, but the side missions around it. With Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt Red has built an entire game around that philosophy. Apart from its surprisingly short, but utterly compelling central questline, the vast majority of what you can do in Night City is entirely optional, but still extremely impactful. This more freeform structure isn't without its faults, including loads of distracting bugs, but the strength of the missions themselves and the broad and interesting choices you have within them make Cyberpunk 2077 one of the most exciting RPGs I've played in recent years. You play as V, a mercenary in Night City who ends up with the psyche of long-dead rock star and anti-corporate terrorist Johnny Silverhand trapped in their head. Yes, that's Keanu Reeves, though his performance is actually a bit stiff relative to the rest of the excellent cast. Do whatever it takes to stop him, defeat him, gut him. If I gotta kill, I'll kill. But Johnny's confrontational relationship with V is wonderfully tense, acting as the anchor of the whole story. Cyberpunk 2077's opening hours do an incredible job of getting you invested in their struggle, and then Night City's sprawling map opens wide. If most game structures look like a redwood tree with a tall trunk that has paths branching off as you go higher, Cyberpunk 2077 is more like a large bush. You don't have to go far to have dozens of tangled branches within reach. Night City is so dense, diverse, and consistently beautiful that there are opportunities to stumble upon unexpected sights and missions all the time. The scope is simply stunning, from the massive skyscrapers to the immaculately detailed in-world advertisements that are plastered all over them. Cyberpunk 2077 feels like an RPG through and through. It's full of rich, beautifully presented conversations and an almost mind-boggling amount of choice in dialogue, character builds, mission approach, and beyond. What's more, those choices can have a massive impact on both V's own story and the characters around them. I once made a suggestion to a character that later lost him his job. That decision altered every future interaction, and knowing that someone else might have a very different relationship with him made my playthrough feel more personal. Similarly, I was shocked to discover one of my favorite missions early on wasn't even offered to another player because of a single decision we made differently. Realizations like this quickly became a common occurrence. The missions themselves are also largely delightful. My favorites range from infiltrating an extravagant parade to a series of detective missions where you actually need to collect evidence on your own to a deeply touching scuba diving mission, all the way to befriending a sentient vending machine. The fact that Cyberpunk 2077 is able to have deep, affecting moments alongside lighthearted goofs and blaring sex ads without any of it feeling out of place is a testament to the strength of both its stories and the world they take place in. And remember, just because something is a side mission doesn't mean it's not important to the main story. Surprisingly, Cyberpunk 2077 only took me around 20 hours to beat the first time, but it was only after reloading a save and spending another 20 hours completing side missions and befriending characters that I went back to finish the story again and found my ending options had drastically changed. After 45 hours, I've now found six wildly different endings and still have plenty more I want to do. While this freeform structure is impressive, it did create a false sense that I was failing to make progress at times. Three percentages relating to different aspects of V's journey are presented like progress trackers in the menu, but they don't actually function that way, making them frustratingly misleading. 
Regardless, the openness of Cyberpunk 2077 is pretty remarkable. Beyond the big story decisions, you also get the good old-fashioned choice of how to kill or politely incapacitate your enemies. There are no character classes here. Instead, you invest points into five primary attributes, and then into perks within each of those. For example, if you're planning to go stealthy, the cool attribute can make enemies slower to detect you, and its stealth perk page is full of additional boons like increased crouched movement speed or unlocking an aerial takedown. Perks will also naturally improve as you use them, making this system wonderfully flexible. Combat opens up gradually as well. While I didn't love the gunplay initially, I eventually found unique weaponry and clever cybernetic augmentations that elevated it above simple pointing and shooting. Some guns can charge up and shoot through walls, while others fire bullets that seek out enemies, and cool iconic weapons add unique twists with flashy looks. Add in cyberware that lets you slow time, double jump, and more, and it's just a matter of time before you find some custom combination that clicks. It never becomes the most complex dance, especially with stuff like the fairly mashy melee options, but it's one that I felt I had complete control over choreographing. Of course, my V's policy was always to try sneaking before going loud. Similar to combat, stealth isn't much deeper than crouch walking out of sight, but planning my route and using quick hacks to do things like blind guards can be an engaging and fun puzzle. Like in a Deus Ex game, I was able to complete some missions without ever drawing a weapon, which is rewarding in a different way than cutting off someone's head with mantis blades. When things do get loud though, a special commendation needs to be given to Cyberpunk 2077's music. The soundtrack is fantastic throughout, but the combat music stands out, driving the pace of fights directly. So we have to talk bugs now. I've only been able to play the PC version so far, but even so, the frequency of bugs was a frustrating nuisance. It's nothing game-breaking, but hardly an hour has gone by without something going awry, and performance is only okay even with very high-end hardware. That makes me especially worried for what last-gen console versions might be like. And remember, we unfortunately can't show footage of any of these issues yet due to CD Projekt Red's pre-release restrictions. For now, you'll have to take my word for it when I say that I've had important conversations undermined by characters glitching between incorrect poses or referencing invisible objects. I frequently get calls overlapping with other conversations, and had to sit through drives with my character bobbing like I was in a run animation. During the few story moments when I did get to see my own character model, I was usually missing my customized hair. And while I primarily had visual issues, I did have to reload a save a couple of times when mission progress was halted. None of this stopped me from loving the stories being told, but they did dampen moments that otherwise would have been powerful. A day one patch is expected, as well as likely many others after that, but CDPR has indicated it will focus on stability and performance, which isn't what gave me the most trouble. To be fair, its exceptional support of The Witcher 3 gives me faith that a lot of these issues could be sorted out with enough time, but right now, it can be a bit of a mess. In a way, I'm sort of jealous of people who first play Cyberpunk 2077 six months from now when I assume a lot of this has been fixed. Cyberpunk 2077 kicks you into its dazzlingly dense cityscape with few restrictions. It offers a staggering amount of choice, and your decisions can have a tangible impact on both the world and people around you. Those stories can be emotional, funny, dark, exciting, and sometimes all of those things at once. The main quest may be shorter than expected when taken on its own, but the multitude of optional missions available can have a surprisingly powerful effect on where V and Johnny's story ends up. It's a shame that frustratingly frequent bugs can occasionally kill an otherwise well-set mood, but Cyberpunk 2077's impressively flexible design makes it a truly remarkable RPG. For more Cyberpunk 2077, be sure to read my full written review on IGN.com, or watch our breakdown of the Cyberpunk world's story leading up to it. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.